Hey guys, I'm Mountain Fiber, and in this video I'm going to show you how I made the perfect late autumn, early winter style cape. We are well into the rainy season here in the Pacific Northwest, which means lots of cold, gray, gloomy days, and every time I have to go outside, all I want to do is wrap myself in something warm and cozy, so I finally decided to give in and make myself a wool cape based on some truly gorgeous Irish walking capes that I've been drooling over online. This project came together surprisingly quickly and easily, and I hope this video will inspire you to make something similar for yourself. Let's get into it. To start, I drafted a basic pattern for the cape based on how long I wanted it to be, about 38 inches. I marked out the dimensions of the neck based on the circumference of my neck plus a few inches of ease, then calculated the radius and added it to the cape length measurement. I placed my tape measure on the center of the neck and measured all around, creating a half circle. I cut out the pattern, then folded it into quarters, cut the neck, and sliced off one quarter. This would come in handy a bit later on. Then I laid out my fabric, in this case 3 yards of 60 inch wide medium weight wool poly blend coating for the outer layer, and a 60 inch wide cotton flannel for the lining. I didn't have enough fabric to cut a full 3 quarter circle, so instead I used that quarter slice and folded it so that it fit within the bounds of my fabric, and marked the shape with chalk. For the hood, I just sketched out the shape I thought a hood should be, and did a quick trial run with some scrap fabric to make sure it was large enough. I wanted it to have long tails draping down, kind of like a scarf. I think they're called lappets, since I had seen them on some actual walking capes. So I positioned the pattern of the hood such that the tails could extend along the cross grain of the fabric and cut the lining and outer fabric together. Then I pinned the lining and wool fabric together at the neck and hung it overnight so it could stretch. The next day, I started with the hood, sewing up the back seam of the lining and the outer fabric separately. then fitting the two pieces right sides together and sewing along all the edges, except where I planned to join the hood to the neck of the cape. Then came the pleasant task of trying to turn out the hood, including those long, narrow tails, which took some doing. I pressed the seams flat, then started pinning the lining and outer fabric together for the main part of the cape. and evened out the hem, trimming away the excess. I decided to bagline the cape for speed and convenience, and because I'm fairly certain the Irish walking capes this is inspired by were baglined as well. I sewed the lining and outer fabrics together, right sides together, all except for the neck where I needed to attach the hood.
Then I turned the cape right side out. In order to attach the hood, I pinned along the raw edges with the outer fabric right sides together and sewed it in place. At this point, I should have sewn the lining fabric of the cape down too, and I ended up redoing that seam off camera. Then I folded in the raw edges of the hood lining and pinned them down over the seam. I slip stitched the lining down and closed up all remaining gaps along the neck and hood. After that, it was time to top stitch a half inch all around the edges of the cape and hood to secure the lining in place, give the cape a little bit more structure, and provide some visual interest. Then I attached three sets of medium-sized hooks and eyes to the top of the cape, about seven inches apart, to act as closures. Initially, I thought about using buttons and buttonholes, but I really didn't like the idea of cutting into the fabric if I didn't have to. This way, I can remove the hooks and eyes and replace them with something else later if I feel like it. And that's it for the construction of the cape. It is everything I dreamed of and more, and I can't wait to wear it out and about, infusing the gray autumn days with some color. This season always brings to mind some of my favorite Victorian poetry, so here's what I've been reading lately. Oh, the scents of the yellow mountain flowers and thorny balls, each three in one, the chestnuts throw on our path in showers. For the drop of the woodland fruits begun, these early November hours that crimson the creeper's leaf across like a splash of blood, intense, abrupt, or a shield else gold from rim to boss, and lay it for show on the fairy cupped, elf needled mat of moss. Thanks for watching!